Welcome to part 3 of Let's Play City of Thieves by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 78. Let's reread this paragraph. Now the street runs north along the quayside for a few hundred yards before arriving at a junction. If you wish to continue north up Harbour Street, turn to 256. If you wish to walk east along Clog Street, turn to 216. Okay, we're going to continue north up Harbour Street, so turn to 256. Here we go. Here we are. Now the houses on the right hand side of the street are small and weather beaten. Um, old women sit outside on the on the front steps cleaning fish and mending fishing nets. They are large and jolly, talking to each other and frequently rolling about, bellowing with laughter. The fishermen do not appear to be at home. The street and the quayside come to an end at a great iron anchor. You turn round and walk back towards the junction. If you wish to stop to talk with the women, Turn to 320. If you wish to ignore them and walk straight back to the junction, turn to 369. Okay, we're going to stop and talk with the women. So turn to 320. Uh, the jolly fishwives' plump cheeks are as round and shiny as red apples. You ask if they own any of the items you need, but they all frown. Uh, they all frown and shake their heads together. Then one tells you that there is a tale that hags have been disappearing down sewers to catch rats for their stew pots. However, she has never seen a hag herself. Uh, you decide to leave the ladies. Uh, you decide to leave the ladies. You then walk back to the junction and turn left into Clog Street. Turn to 216. Okay, we're just going to write down as well that hags have been going down the sewers. That's important information. New line. Hags have whoops have been going down sewers. There we are. Okay, two hundred and sixteen, here we go. Clog Street is very narrow and lined with terraced cottages and the occasional shop. To your left you see what looks like a small boy lying face down on the cobblestones, groaning loudly. Uh, a hood is pulled over his head and you cannot see his face. A wooden hoop and stick lie by his side. If you wish to stop to help, turn to 72. If you would rather walk on, turn to 317. <coughs> yeah, we're going to stop to help. <coughs> Excuse me. As you bend down to help the injured boy, he suddenly rolls over and you see the flashing blade of a dagger before your eyes. The boy is in fact a goblin thief and you must fight him for your life. Goblin, skill 5, stamina 4. If you win, turn to 208. Okay, goblin 5-4. Let's do this. Affirmative control, let's do this. Remember, from level 14 of World's Scariest Police Chases, uh, the tank level. Don't need the comma there. Um, okay, so rolling for him first. It's five against eleven. Let's go. Okay, eight and nineteen. I win. Whoops. There we go. That puts him down to two. One more and he's dead. Uh, where am I? Um, Sixteen and twenty. So I win again. And he's dead. That's that. Good. Let's end the Mr. Goblin. And okay, get rid of the buzzing. There we are. And let's turn to 208. The Goblin's pockets contain two gold pieces, a clove of garlic, and some old knuckle bones. Take what you wish and head east east again along Clog Street. Turn to 317. Okay, two gold pieces, a clove of garlic, and knuckle bones. Okay, so up to 23 gold. Uh, clove of garlic. Knuckle bones. Uh, turn to 317.
One of the shops to your left is a candle maker's. There are many different coloured candles burning brightly in the window. If you wish to enter the shop, turn to 241. If you wish to continue east, turn to 280. Uh, we're going to continue east and turn to 280. Further along the street on the left is another shop. A sign outside reads, Ben Borryman, Silversmith. If you wish to enter the shop, turn to 213. If you'd rather keep going east, turn to 100. Okay, okay we're going to enter because this, uh, this is the man we need. So 213. Remember I wrote down any information, I need, uh, I need Ben Borryman in Clog Street in order, to fi in order for him to make me a silver arrow. OK, here we go. A man wearing a white apron is sitting at a bench busily polishing a silver goblet. There are several silver objects in a glass cupboard secured by an iron grill at the back of the shop. You may talk to the silversmith, turn to 248, attack him with your sword, turn to 135, or leave the shop and continue east. Turn to 100. OK, um, we're going to talk to the silversmith and turn to 248, of course. Here we are. Now you ask Ben Borryman if he has any silver arrows for sale. He replies that he does not, but will make one for you at a cost of 10 gold pieces or 2 magic items. If you, um, if you can afford his asking price, turn to 85. If you cannot afford to pay the price, turn to 42. Okay, so uh, we can afford it. So we're going to pay 10 gold pieces and put ourselves down to 13 gold. And then we're going to uh, turn to 85. Whoops, uh, the headset just fell off my head. Uh, you pay the silversmith and wait patiently while he makes a silver arrow for you. Finally, he presents you with it and assures you that it will be completely accurate in flight. You thank him for his trouble and leave his shop. Outside, you set off east once again. Turn to 100. OK, so we have the silver arrow, so we're going to put that in our possessions. Whoops, misspelled that. Is a turn to a hundred. Uh, you soon arrive at a junction. If you wish to turn north into Tower Street, turn to 127. If you wish to continue east in, into Stable Street, turn to 246. Okay, we're going to go to uh, at a Stable Street, so turn to 246. Um, as you walk warily down the narrow, excuse me, let me start again. As you walk warily down the narrow cobbled street, you are suddenly confronted by a little old man who dashes out of one of the houses. He pulls a dirty bottle out of a canvas bag. Uh, out of a canvas bag. As he speaks, you can't help staring at the large wart on his nose with its tuft of hair. He, smile, he smiles and asks if you would like to pay two gold pieces for a drink of his wonderful healing potion. If you wish to pay for a drink, turn to 98. If you would rather keep going east, turn to 263. <clears throat> OK, we're going to, to pay for a drink and turn to 98. Here we are. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you uncork the bottle with your teeth and take a long gulp of the liquid. Fortunately, the liquid is what the man claims it to be. Add three stamina points and one luck point. Is that necessary? Uh, no and no. Um, well refreshed, you set off east again, bidding the old man farewell. Turn to 363. Um, excuse me a moment, where was I? OK, so we went to 246. Excuse me, I just need to check something. 246. Then we were here. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I thought we had. Yeah, uh, we need to pay two gold pieces for that. Yeah, so put that down to eleven now because we bought the drink, didn't we? Um, you know, go to ninety-eight. Even though we didn't need it, but, you know, See, it's done now. Um, anyway, three hundred sixty-three. Got to pay them uh, the money. Um, in the middle of the street, you see a large manhole cover. If you wish to lift the manhole cover to see where it leads to, um, or whither it leads, um, turn to 48. If you wish to keep walking east, turn to 205. Uh, we're going to lift the manhole cover because we need to get the hag's hair, or whatever. So turn to 48. Uh, there is an iron ladder secured to the rim of a hole, descending into a tunnel below. It is dark, and a very unpleasant smell rises up from below. If you wish to climb down the ladder, turn to 221. If you wish to replace the manhole cover and continue east, turn to 205. Uh, we're going to climb down the ladder, of course, so turn to 221. <clears throat> At the bottom of the ladder, you realise, much to your disgust, that you are standing in a sewer. There are torches along the tunnel wall, giving a very dim light, and droplets of water make eerie sounds as they fall into the sewage water. If you wish to walk north along the tunnel, turn to, uh, turn to 356. If you wish to walk south, turn to 118. Okay, uh, we're going to walk north along the tunnel, so turn to 356. Here we are, oh, lovely. Right, here we are. Ahead you hear the sound of squealing and frantic splashing. Long shadows are cast by moving objects coming towards you. Uh, then you see the sleek, glistening shapes of three giant rats only a few yards away from you. You draw your sword hastily and fight each of the rats in turn. Okay, let's do this. First rat, 4-4. Four, four. Second rat, 5-4. Five, Third rat, 5-5. Five, five. Okay, 4-4, four, 5-4, four, 5-5. Five, four, five, five. If you win, turn to 28. Okay, fight each of the rats in turn. Okay, so uh, what are they called? First rat, second rat, third rat. Okay. First rat, ra, is four four. So put them all down now, then I won't have to remember. Second rat is five four. And then third rat is five five. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so uh, roll for him first, or the rat first, whatever. Okay, so four plus twelve, sixteen to fifteen. It actually beat me. Can you believe sixteen? 16 to 15, it actually got a hit in. Oh dear. Alright, the rat hurt me, so we're down to 21 stamina now. Okay, and again, okay, he gets 5, that's 9, I get 10, that's 21. So 5 to 21. Puts him down to 2. And then. 8 to 22. So 8 to 22. I win. He's dead. Good. Alright, next rat. Skill is 5 this time. Okay, so 12 to 19. Puts him down to 2. And then uh, 9 to 21. That means he's dead. I put it in now. Right, he's dead. My third rat, skill five. Uh, nine. That's f fourteen to twenty-one. Okay. Uh, yeah, that puts him down to three. Good. Um. 11 to 23. 
puts him to uh, one, one health. Assuming it's male, could be female. Uh, then 14 to 18, a little bit closer this time. So, all three rats are dead. Let's get rid of the buzzing. And let's move on to 28. And there are the nasty rats themselves. Okay, so 28. Here we are. While you were fighting the giant rats, you thought you saw someone or something skulking in the shadows ahead. If you wish to continue further north along the tunnel, turn to 265. If you'd rather turn round and walk back to the entrance hole, turn to 104. Uh, we're going to continue further, of course, so 265. Um, with your sword still dripping with the blood of the rats, you walk further along the tunnel. The ledge you are... Um, the ledge along which you are walking is narrow and slippery, and you have to tread carefully so as not to fall into the slow flowing, slowly flowing um, sewage channel. Yeah, you need an adverb there because it's slowly flowing. It doesn't flow slow, it flows slowly. So it should be slowly flowing. Um, yeah into the slowly flowing sewage channel. The tunnel gradually bends round to the right and as you follow it round the silence is suddenly shattered by the sound of running feet and a wailing scream. Coming straight at you, wild eyed with flailing arms and contorted and contorted face uttering demon sorcery, is a white haired old woman dressed in rags. She is a hag. Do you possess a potion of mind control? If you have this item, turn to eighty two. If you do not, turn to three hundred and ninety. There they are. <clears throat> what a lovely woman. Oh, I lo oh love, love how they've done the uh, the silhouette there, uh, the shadow. Um, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful artwork, really good atmosphere. Yeah, lovely. Although the light is actually above the hag, yet yeah, the shadow is actually, and the shadow is above the hag as well, which if the light were above the hag, the shadow would be lower down. So the light needs to be lower down for the shadow to be there. Anyway, um, okay, so we don't have a potion of mind control, so turn to 390. Or do we have a potion of mind control? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, so. If you have the site, turn to 82. If not, turn to 390. Let's go. The hag is conjuring a spell which instills terrible fear in you. Your mind is full of illusions and you think you are being burned alive with a crowd of skeletal faces looking on gleefully. You swing your sword around, blindly trying to hack at the faces laughing at you. Test your luck. If you are lucky, a swipe from your sword cuts into the hag. Turn to 144. If you're unlucky, your sword merely cuts through the air, uh, 10 to 59. Okay, so our luck is currently 11. So we have 35 out of 36 probability of being lucky. So test our luck, we need this to be 11 or less. Thank you. But we use a luck point. I could have used the potion of fortune and that would have taken my luck up to 12, meaning it's a certainty I would have won would have increased my initial luck up to 12, plus the luck up to 12. But I'll save that for another day, or another paragraph. Anyway, so we were lucky, and turn to 144. <coughs> Excuse me. The hag screams as your sword cuts deep into her arm. Her concentration is lost and the spell is broken. Your mind clears and you are able to face her with your senses acute again. Uh, from out of her clothing, the, the hag pulls a dagger with a long, shimmering blade. You are eager to fight her. Hag, skill 7, stamina 7. If you win, turn to 303. I think if you fail that luck test, uh, it's instant death. So... Uh, that's something to consider. Anyway, skill 7's uh, stamina 7.
Um, okay, let's roll the dice. So, she has skill 7, let's go. That's 13 to 19. Whoops. Puts him down, puts her rather down to 5. 8 to 23. Puts her down to 3. So that was 8 to 23. Next, uh, 17 to, to 21, that was a good one for her, but I got good as well, so I win, uh, down to 1, and then hopefully the, I hope the last one, uh, 15 to 17, yep, good, so she's dead, so 15 to 17, there we go, jolly good. Okay, so the hag's dead. Let's get rid of the annoying buzzing, which you might not be able to hear. I don't know. Um, if you win, turn to 303. Let's go. You bend over the motionless body of the dead hag and you cut off a tuft of her hair with your sword. You put the hair safely in your backpack and walk back down the tunnel to the entrance hole. Turn to 104. Okay, so we have hag's hair. Uh... Let's put that down. Put that down in our possessions. Okay, new line, and we can cross that off our list. Things to get. There we go. So we have the hags here. We have the black pearl. Now we just need the lotus flower. Okay, um, 104. Back at the entrance hole, you may either climb up the ladder to the street in order to continue east, turn to 205, or if you have not done so already, you may walk south along the river, along the sewer, sorry, turn to 118. Now we're going to climb up and continue east, so 205. After replacing the manhole cover, you set off east again. Everything seems a little too quiet, and you begin to feel nervous. Ahead, you see that Stable Street turns sharply to the left. If you wish to walk round the corner, turn to 44. If you wish to walk back to the junction and turn right into Tower Street, turn to 127. Okay, um, what we're going to do is, our gold is 11, so what we're going to do is we are going to uh, walk back to the junction and turn right into Tower Street, so turn to 127. Just ahead of you, three men are involved in a fight. The two younger men appear to be attacking an older man with iron bars. If you wish to help the old man, turn to 177. Um, if, you wish, if you would rather avoid the bawling men and continue north, turn to 348. Okay, uh, we're going to avoid the bawling men and continue north and turn to 348. Tower Street makes a sharp turn to the right, going east between tall buildings. An iron bridge crosses overhead between two of the buildings and you see movement on it. Small cloaked people are carrying laden sacks between the buildings, apparently in a great hurry. If you wish to call out to them, turn to 251. If you wish to walk under the bridge and continue east, turn to 30. And we're going to walk under the bridge and continue east, so turn to 30. Tower Street soon ends at a junction, where it meets Stable Street running north and south. You decide to go north, turn to 76. Off we go. To your left, you see a large wooden barn set back from the houses. Two horses are tied to a post outside the barn, and smoke rises from a crooked chimney on top of its low, flat roof. If you wish to walk through the barn doors, turn to 25. If you would rather continue north, turn to 115.
We're going to continue north and turn to 115. Okay, coming towards you as fast as he is able. I'll start again. Coming towards you as fast as he is able is a man in tattered rags with a ball and, well, with a ball and chain attached to his leg. He, ex he is exhausted and collapses in your arms. His face is dirty and unshaven. And with great difficulty, he manages to speak, saying, Please cut me free. The town guards are not far behind me. I have been locked in a dungeon for two years, but managed to tunnel my way out. I was robbed and unable to pay my taxes. So Lord Azur ordered uh, that I should be ordered that I be jailed for five years. Please help me. Um, farther up the street, you hear shouting voices and then armed men come into view. If you want to cut through his chains with your sword, turn to 90. If you want to hand him over to the town guards, turn to 274. Um, we're going to hand him over to the town guards and turn to 274. The guards are pleased that you have caught their wanted man. They tell you that he is an escaped murderer. The chief guard hands you five gold pieces, saying, Here's your reward, but you won't be getting another one. He won't escape again. You watch for a short while as they lead the shouting murderer away before continuing along. Uh, continuing north along Stable Street, 10 to 222. Okay, that's five gold pieces, so up to 16 now. Uh, 222. On the right-hand side, the houses are separated from the street by a wooden fence with shrubs, trees, bushes and flowers behind it. There's a turnstile in the middle of the fence, by the side of which is a sign reading Public Gardens, Entry Fee, One Gold Piece. If you wish to go into the gardens, turn to 270. If you would rather keep on walking, turn to 133. And we're going to go in and we're going to pay one gold piece. So we're down to 15 now. And uh, let's go in. So 370. Uh, you, you place the coin in the slot and walk through the turnstile. Although the flowers and shrubs are not outstanding, you are nevertheless surprised that such a place exists in Port Black Sand. The gardens are not very large, extending back some 60 yards to where some houses back onto them. There are two paths to follow, one of which runs around the edge of the gardens and one that leads directly into the centre, where there is some topiary. Where there, there, where there is some topiary. Um, each shrub has been cut into the shape of an animal, and you, and you decide to take a closer look. The path leads into a small paved area surrounded by the animal-shaped shrubs. In the middle there is a stone plinth upon which sits a large earthen bowl containing lotus flowers. There is a painted sign which reads, Do not pick the flowers. The gardener is nowhere to be seen, and there is nobody else about. If you wish to risk picking one of the flowers, turn to 14. If you would rather leave the gardens and continue north, turn to 133. Uh, do not pick the flowers, lovely. Uh, we're going to risk picking one of the flowers uh, because we need a lotus flower for the uh, uh, for the compound. So we're going to risk it, um, and we're going to turn to fourteen. As soon as you pluck one of the flowers, you hear the noise of rustling leaves. Three of the animal-shaped hedges have uprooted themselves and are closing in on you. Do you have a ring of fire? If you have, turn to 237. If not, turn to 191. Okay, do we have one? Uh, unfortunately not, no. Um, okay, we're going to have to uh, turn to 191. Uh, you draw your sword to defend yourself against the advancing leaf beasts. They all attack you at once, seemingly trying to crush and smother you. Uh, treat the leaf beasts as a single creature. Leaf beasts, skill 6, stamina 6. If you win, you run back to the turnstile, still clutching the lotus, and make your getaway into Stable Street. Turn to 133. Okay, 6-6, six, six, leaf beasts. Whoops, not beats. 
beasts. Okay, six and six. Okay, let's go. So he has skill six. Let's go. Eight to nineteen. Four. Put them down to four. Or them down to four. Uh, seventeen to seventeen. So even Stevens. So no overall change. Um, ten to seven uh, to eighteen rather. So ten to eighteen, I win. Um, thirteen to eighteen. So that's the end of him. Okay, that's the end of Leaf Beasts. Get rid of the buzzing. And then let's turn to 133. Now the street ends at a junction with Mill Street, which runs east and west along the city wall. Looking east, you see a group of town guards marching towards you, and, and you decide to walk quickly west along Mill Street. On your left you see a narrow lane and ahead you see a, a young lad coming towards you pushing a barrow laden with, uh, laden with fruit. If you wish to walk down the lane, turn to 182. If you wish to buy some fruit from the barrow boy, turn to 160. Oh yeah, we have the lotus flower, of course, sorry. <laughs> completely forgot about that. So, lotus flower. And we can tick that off here. No, it's not working. There we are. Okay, so that's all. That's a few things for the uh, compound. Anyway, um, we're going to walk down the lane, turn to 182. Now, the lane ends at a small shop. On the glass paned door is painted a sign. Uh, Jimmy Quick Tint, best tattooist in town. A tiny bell rings as you push the door open and a fat man wearing purple silk smiles in greeting. You are surprised to see that his arms, hands, feet and even his face are completely covered in colourful tattoos. Yeah, in, in those days, very few people had tattoos. I mean... I mean, no one would have their face tattooed in the, uh, you know, when this book was published in the 80s. But nowadays, you see it all the time. I mean... Yeah, people get, I'm just, I never had any desire to get a tattoo. I mean, I would never want one, I'd never need one. If I, if I had one, I would want it to go immediately. So I don't understand this huge obsession with tattoos. They're just very unpleasant. You know, I, I can understand the sort of, the, oh yeah, it's my identity and everyone's trying to get their own identity. But it's more of an identity and more of a statement these days not to have a tattoo. So if, even if I wanted to make a statement, which I don't, um, not having one is more of a statement these days than having one. Anyway, um, you are surprised to see that his arms, hands, feet, and even his face are completely covered in colourful tattoos. He grins and says, Practice what you preach. You tell him that you require a yellow sun to be tattooed on your forehead with a white unicorn in the centre of it. He replies that it is a simple task, but it will cost you ten gold pieces. If you can afford his high price, turn to 279. If you cannot, turn to 354. Okay, um, yeah, we have ten gold pieces, so let's let's pay that. Yep, so we're down to five gold pieces now. And uh, let's go to 279. There's a tattoo artist himself.
Um, he takes the money and motions you to sit down on a wooden stool. After a long and painful process of repeatedly pricking your forehead with a sharp needle, he applies the indelible inks. You look in a mirror on the wall and find your new appearance somewhat strange. You shrug your shoulders and leave the shop. Uh, yeah, well, no laser treatment in this day and age, my friend. You have that forever. Um, you shrug your shoulders and leave the shop. You then walk back up the lane and turn left into Mill Street, turn to 307. Okay, the last paragraph, I think, of this video. Walking towards you along the street are two huge guards wearing the black uniform of Lord Azur. As they get closer, you see that they are trolls, brutal mercenaries employed by Lord Azur as Imperial Elite Guards. To your right, there is a tree which reaches almost to the top of the city wall. If you wish to risk walking past the trolls, turn to 290. If you wish to climb the tree in order to get over the wall, turn to 11. Okay, so there are the trolls, I think. Okay, so in the next video, I will, I will be deciding whether to... Um... Oh yeah, I have to write down I have the tattoo, don't I? So... Uh... I have the tattoo required. And then new line. Okay, so I'm going to put that the paragraph one is 307. And, um, and I'll be deciding in the next part whether to risk walking past the trolls or climbing the tree. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part. Uh, I hope you can join me for the next part. Um, possibly before the next part, I'm going to make a start to uh, croc on the PlayStation. I really want to do a normal console game again. I haven't done one for half a year. I've just been doing these books. And they... I'm not being funny, but doing them does get a little bit long in the tooth. I need a bit of variety. I want to play a game. Um, and that's going to be Croc on the... Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's going to be Croc Legend of the Gobbos on the PlayStation. Um, hopefully, try not to die, but it'll be more of a relaxed playthrough, a bit like my Spyro ones. I'll try to find all the gems and rescue all the Gobbos as well, so... And all the secret levels, so look forward to that. Um... Yes, yeah, so the next video will probably be part one of Croc Legend of the Gobbos. And after that, I really want to do Croc 2, because I actually prefer that game. Um, that's one of my favourite PlayStation platformers. So thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.